just introduce yourself. Just t- tell us a bit about who you are, how long you've been in the industry, uh, and why you enjoy it, why you've made it a career. Sure. Well, my name's Chris Bailey. Um, I'm, I'm currently founder of the Financial Orbit Limited Company. I've been in investments and finance for about 18 years now, and it's always been my passion. Actually, I think when I was about 16 years old, I decided I wanted to be in the financial or investment areas. I studied economics at university then did a master's course in finance and investment, and then had an 18-year period of excitable uh, moving around of the market as, as an analyst, a fund manager, and a couple of years ago started up my own company. Why do I like it? It's quite simple. It's a fast-moving world, it's an ever-changing world, and it's an exciting world. It it drives you hard. Intellectually, it's very satisfying, and you just might make some money out of it as well. Uh, Why did you you decide to to, go it alone? What was the catalyst? In the sense that after 16 or 17 years, as it was at the time, in the financial sector, working for larger companies, I suddenly realised that actually I wasn't learning anything new anymore in the sense that whilst the investment area is really exciting and, and fascinating and there's new news and information to appraise every day, the reality is as you go up that corporate ladder you get other issues and other problems. So guess what, I was in meetings all day talking about risk or compliance or other factors, things taking me away from that pure investment area. So I was a bit fed up of that. But the second aspect is that Actually, you realise that in larger companies, you always have people who are the professional politicians, or you have people who are there just to empire build or things like that. What I'm interested in is getting to the truth about investments and trying to drive myself in order to, to find that out and find out what I can do. And actually, I thought, it's best to set up on my own. So I took the bold and, and brave step of doing that. It surprised a lot of people. And actually, what I found was that 95 97% of my contact base basically said, what on earth are you doing, Chris? You know, why, why are you taking this move? Or even today would say, well, when are you going to go back and get a proper job? But I, but I realised that the reason is, is because actually they're, they, they couldn't count on such a step themselves. You know, perhaps they're, they're happy within the, the corporate environment, the sort of the, the salary each month in the bank and stuff like that. But for me, it's that driving forward intellectual aspect, which I like. And I thought, well, I'm of the right age, I've got the right opportunity in terms of finances and things like that. Why not step ahead and do it? So I did. Okay, I mean, just in terms of your, you know, your early training, what, what, just talk a bit about what you learned in your early days uh, of training and then how successful you were back in the... So when, when you're in your 20s... Twen- oh, so, sorry. So, uh, when, did, when did you get into it? What yes, year? yeah. So I graduated from my master's course in 1996, which which seems a long time ago now. And I, I joined a company which specialised actually in, in hedge funds. And because there were, actually wasn't that many jobs around at that moment in time. And it was actually the best thing I could have ever done. Because what this company allowed me to do in my early 20s was travel the world meeting hedge fund managers, which was absolutely fascinating. And you think you're clever because you've done an undergraduate and a master's course. And in reality, of course, you know very little. And having to prepare for meetings, often one-on-one meetings with hedge fund managers, particularly in the States, but also in Europe and Asia, in my early and mid-twenties, sharpened me up hugely. It was the most fascinating and brilliant first two or three years of my business career. But I realised that whilst interviewing fund managers uh, was interesting and putting together portfolios um, of of such holdings for for high net worth clients was, was an interesting business, it wasn't really what I wanted to do, which was manage money, uh, analyse companies, and do, if you like, the conventional investment appraisal. So I actually joined a hedge fund, and I joined a hedge fund in, in the year 2000, uh, a gentleman called Mark Bradshaw, who ran a company called Bradshaw Asset Management. And again, it, was, it turned out to be a fantastic move. I spent six and a half years there, a European long short fund, and again, I came in thinking, I sort of got a good feel for European companies and what they do and the opportunities and how to look at investments. And I realised in my time there that I had a lot to learn and I did learn an awful lot there. And it was the perfect way, if you like, to, in the latter half of my 20s and into my early 30s, to again sharpen me up, make me learn things and push me on intellectually. 
Yeah, I mean, at one point you were managing uh, uh, around two billion as a fund manager. I mean, you know, what, what is that like to a layman? So, in essence, it's a progression because if you think about my early career, it was as an analyst. And then I, then I could be, it was given some portfolio management responsibilities, and it just progressively builds up. And in the end, by my uh, mid thirties and, and later thirties, if you like, I was, as you say, managing around about two billion uh, within a multi-asset team. And you don't notice the pressure because ultimately it's about finding interesting investments, performing, responding to client requests, and, and all of those things required of a fund manager. Plus, of course that unfortunate range of other meetings that you have to do as well, risk and compliance um, and other sort of managerial things. But in terms of managing the money, I, I never felt any pressure because my belief was always if you do a great job, if you try your hardest, you're, you're thorough and diligent and you understand what you're trying to do, then why should you feel any pressure? You, sometimes you need some luck and sometimes you get some luck, but the old um, saying of uh, the harder I work, the luckier I get is absolutely true and that's whether you're managing your own portfolio or managing two billion pounds or something. Talk about some of your mentors and role models. You met, I mean, you mentioned one, the key guy. Yes. But, um, and, and, and the sort of impact that some of the, the key people that you've met, who those people are, yes. the sort of impact they've had on you and, yes. and where you've come now. Yes. The reality is, in the investment game and the finance game, if you're not learning, then you should get out of it. And so as, along your career journey, your career progression, you will always bump into people that in hindsight you actually learn an awful lot from and actually you realise that what you're doing is some of their mannerisms or analytical capabilities or just way of looking at things you absorb into your own thinking and it influences and changes you. Uh, and I mentioned Mark Bradshaw earlier uh, who I worked for for six and a half years and he was a, a hard driving uh, individual, somebody who definitely intellectually sharpened me up. But actually what I really learned from him was how to talk to companies or talk to people. Because I realised that you can analyse things to death, but sometimes it's in those, those range of softer skills. The, the ability to go into a, a meeting with, let's say, a, a corporate management team, and who are, who are going to be on message, who have done this thing a thousand times before, um, and probably in that earnings round or that, that run around of meetings they're doing, are probably on their 10th or 20th meeting. So in order to get something different, you've got to have a certain different type of skill of trying to weasel that out in the nicest possible way. Um, and Mark could do that. And that's what I learned from him. That, that was, a, in hindsight, uh, a fantastic experience and a fantastic insight and something which I use even to this day. So I think he was a, a huge influence on me in, in hindsight. The other um, impetuses or influences on me actually came from ongoing reading because you can learn a huge amount from investors um, who write books about the subject and the like. And somebody like Peter Lynch, the very famous Fidelity Fund Manager, when I read his book One Up on Wall Street, um, I think probably for the first time around about 15 years ago, it just blew my mind. Because it was at that moment in time when I was trying to absorb as much as possible. And what Peter said was essentially, as an individual, you can make a huge difference through your observation of things. Again, you do all the background work, you, you run numbers, you, you do all that sort of conventional analytical stuff, but some essence of gut feel insight um, can be hugely insightful. And doing things like walking down the high street, going to visit shops, when you visit companies, taking note of some of those other issues around, just not, not just what was in the core meeting, but other things around it. That's what Peter told me, and that's how he got one up on Wall Street and produced some fantastic returns, managing a lot of money. But it, it inspired me really to, to look at things in a slightly different way. So he was hugely influential.